Just because a building is renamed and altered, it does not mean that a haunting will end. In some cases, this makes a haunting worse. When Victoria moved into her new flat, which had previously been part of the Red Cow public house, it was not long before she started experiencing paranormal activity. As some viewers may be aware, the Red Cow in its day was known to be haunted. Following the publication of The Haunting of the Free Trade Inn back in November last year, Victoria contacted me to ask if I knew anything about paranormal activity at the old Red Cow and the car park that the new builds were on. Victoria then went on to say, I was the first resident of the pub after its conversion and had a few unexplainable things happen and have been told that it's haunted. I moved into the new builds next door, upon their completion, and have seen figures of a woman and a child, along with shadows out of the corner of my eye, on multiple occasions. My partner has seen a woman here too. I also traced my family tree back a while ago, and found out that my ancestors used to run the pub back in the 1890s. None of my living family had any idea that this had been the case. Whilst researching, I also found that my four times great-grandfather died there on Christmas Day in 1894, if my memory serves me right. Any information or stories that you have would be amazing, as I've struggled to find much out since the discovery of my family link. I only wish that I had visited the pub earlier on. I was fascinated by what Victoria told me, and went on to share what I had written about the Red Cow in my Ghosts Around Pelsall 2 book, which I published back in 2013. The following is what I wrote. The resident ghost at the Red Cow is only likely to be seen by gents, since it is seen most often in the gents. The apparition of a smartly dressed man wearing a hat is usually seen by gents when at the sink. The man, dressed in old-fashioned attire, walks behind them and acknowledges them. When they turn to acknowledge him, he has simply disappeared. The man is regularly seen by the pub cleaner, who is no longer bothered by the ghost. However, gents who have seen him before are slightly unnerved when they are told of the story. The cleaner has stayed overnight at the Red Cow in the past and has not been bothered by any paranormal activity there. However, she is unnerved by the cellar and has never and will never go down there. Although it is unknown as to whether the cellar is haunted, it is known that dead bodies were stored down there during wartime due to the lack of grave diggers and the intense cold which the cellar could offer. Since the cellar was once used as a temporary morgue, it is hardly surprising that people are a little reluctant to go down there to investigate. Way in the past, when one of the elderly regulars died, his flat cap was pinned to the wall above where he used to sit, in memory of him. The gent was a firm regular and used to go every day to the Red Cow. Whether his spirit form was ever seen is unknown. Victoria then wrote back to me with further information. Thank you for your speedy reply. It's fascinating to hear about things other people have seen. Then she continued to tell me about what she had experienced while living at the Red Cow building and the flats on the adjoining car park. The toilets were situated in what would now be flat 2. I lived in flat 1 which covered the main bulk of downstairs, all except for the back right corner of the square part of the building. I ventured down the cellar once, but I can't report any unusual activity or feelings. The strangest and explainable occurrence that happened to me at the property took place one night after I'd fallen asleep next to my son, who was three at the time. I'd just put him to bed. I woke up to hear what I thought was the TV from number two, 
But after leaving his bedroom and entering the corridor, I could tell that the sound was coming from my living room or kitchen. This is at the front of the pub, now where the bay window is on the left-hand side, as if you were looking directly at the building. The door was closed, and the only people who lived there at the time was myself and my son. When I opened the door, my CD player was playing track 10 of the CD in the machine. There was no possible way that the CD could play without someone pressing a series of buttons to make it do so. And I had been asleep with my son for approximately three hours. Another was coming home one day to find that my coasters had been stacked into a pile on top of a magazine that had been closed after I had left it open and the coasters in the corners of the table. Again, no one had been there as my son had been at nursery all day and myself at work. On numerous occasions, I felt as though someone was in the property or would return after being out and have the strangest sensation that someone had been there while I was gone. It was a bizarre feeling. Since moving next door, as I mentioned in my prior email, I frequently see a shadow but can never make out what it is. The woman was first seen by my partner when he stayed one night. He woke me up and told me that he'd seen her standing at the end of the bed and she was wearing white. A few months later I woke in the night to see a woman with short bob length hair wearing what looked like a white blouse with a brooch where her top buttons would meet and something dark on her bottom half that resembled a long skirt. She was holding hands with a young boy around the age of three or four, based on his height, and they stood there at the end of my bed. They looked at me for about ten seconds, then disappeared. I have seen the woman again on her own, again waking up in the night. She was stood at the end of my bed. She reached out her arm and started to move towards me as though trying to hold my hand. I fumbled to turn the lamp on and couldn't find the switch. I looked away to find it, and upon turning back with the light on, she'd gone. I felt completely at ease, and had a comforting feeling from her, and as though there was some kind of connection or meaning as to why she wanted to hold my hand. If you can help with any further information about why these properties should be haunted, or you would like to share your story, please get in touch. I will be delighted to hear from you. The photographs and information in this article were very kindly loaned to me by Mr Andrew Weller, Chairman of Pelsall History Centre. After telling me what she had experienced, I visited Pelsall History Centre to find out more about the area and to see if I could shed any light on what or why Victoria was experiencing such paranormal activity. On my arrival to Pelsall History Centre, I was delighted to see two folders which were dedicated to the history of Heath End Pelsall. The documents enclosed told the story of a close-knit hamlet known as Heath End, which was cut off from both Pelsall and Rushall. Heath End, also known as Cod End, was self-sufficient in every way, having its own shops, post office, a chapel, a farm and three survey public houses with the red cow considered to denote the centre of the hamlet. By 1902, Heath End Brickworks, also known as Marl Hole, occupied land to the rear of the red cow. While speaking to Mr Andrew Weller, chairman of Pelsall History Centre, it was confirmed that the red cow cellar was used as a mortuary, even further back than World War I. In addition to this, he then went on to tell me that inquests were often heard the old bush for those who had committed suicide in the nearby molehole, following which victims were most likely taken to the red cow's mortuary. Mr Weller then told me about an incredibly sad incident whereby a boy of 11 years old had apparently committed suicide in the nearby molehole after being chastised. Molehole was a well-known scene of several such tragedies at that time. I was intrigued about the story of the boy who had committed suicide, since it was such an unusual incident for someone so young. 
The boy had originally lived with his family on Walsall Road, near to the Red Cow. However, 12 months earlier, his mother committed suicide by taking poison. Then, his father attempted to commit suicide, following which he became an inmate of Burntwood Lunatic Asylum. After losing his parents, Austin Frank Loveridge went to live with his older sister, who also lived on Walsall Road. The inquest relating to his suicide reads, Highly strong, the lad had got into trouble on two occasions that week and had talked of going away. Initially, it was thought that Austin had run away after he was missed from home on Thursday the 23rd of January. However, on Monday the 27th of January 1930, his fully clothed body was found in Marlhole. It was a clay surface by Marlhole and the boy was wearing newly studied boots. But there were no signs that he had accidentally slipped down the bank. Following this incident, it is likely that Austin's body would have been taken to the nearby mortuary at the Red Cow, similar to his mother. Then, after reading this dreadfully tragic story, I would venture the thought that perhaps in the afterlife, perhaps mother and son had joined together again and returned to a previously happier time and a familiar place. The Red Cow being the only familiar place still standing. I did wonder if perhaps Victoria had seen the ghosts of the boy and his mother. As for paranormal activity experienced, in the new properties which now occupy the old car park next to the Red Cow, I have no idea why these should be haunted. According to my research, nothing occupied where the old car park used to be, as you can see in the plans included in this article. However, I would add that in its time as a hamlet, Heath End had a very vibrant and busy population. In 1914, there were 18 shopkeepers serving this small community. I could only, therefore, suggest that in the afterlife, perhaps previous occupants like to return to Heath End to see how things have changed from a place only familiar to them. 